So these days, the majority of smartphones that get released offer a tasty bit of 5G action. And Christ, do manufacturers like to scream about that next-gen connectivity, slapping 5G all over the box and further elongating even the most clunky of smartphone names. So if 5G is a priority for you, but you're not minted enough to spunk out whopping great wadges of cash on the latest flagship smartphones, well, no worries. I've rounded up my pick of the very best 5G-ready budget smartphones right now. All of them under 400 quid, some of them under 300, and I've even squeezed in a couple under 200. And I've personally tested and reviewed all the smartphones in this roundup, so go check out my unboxings and reviews right here on Techspert. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So one of my favourite options at the 350 quid price point is Samsung's Galaxy A52s 5G, which proves that Sammy really can spunk out a great mid-ranger, as well as those uber expensive flagships. The design is pretty straightforward, but I do love the IP67 dust and water resistance, which is tricky to find at this price, while the awesome mint finish is proper lush, as the name kind of suggests. Samsung fans should really enjoy that feature-filled One UI experience, which ain't too different from what you'd get from their flagship smartphones, while also Sammy has kindly promised several years of Android and security updates. That 6.5-inch 120Hz Super AMOLED screen gets a thumbs up, chucking out sharp Full HD Plus images complete with Samsung's trademark colours that positively pop. Definitely a good one for your Netflix and your Disney Plus and all that good stuff, despite the lack of HDR streaming support. All the other features you'd hope for and expect from a budget blower are present and correct. The likes of micro SD memory card expandability for the storage, you've got NFC for your contactless payments, and a headphone jack if you want to get plugged in. And yes, the Snapdragon 778G chipset which runs the show has a built-in 5G modem, hence the Galaxy's inclusion in this roundup. And that Snapdragon's pretty beefy as well. The A52S can handle quite demanding fare like Genshin Impact without fouling its draws. The 4,500 milliamp battery kept me going all day, no worries, although the Galaxy does charge at a rather lethargic pace thanks to the bundled 15 watt charger. And last up, that feature-packed camera is respectable, if not brilliant, often struggling with moving subjects or tougher lighting conditions. The video results definitely are a step down from those flagships, not too surprising given the massive drop in price, but overall this is a great smartphone that won't absolutely cane your wallet. Now one of the best budget 5G smartphones actually launched in early 2022 is Xiaomi's Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G. This is a proper whopper at a shade under 6.7 inches, but you once again have a gorgeous AMOLED screen and even a stereo speaker setup. Likewise, the Redmi can handle a proper afternoon-long gaming session on quite demanding Android titles, this time courtesy of the Snapdragon 695 SoC with 5G support for your online action on the likes of Call of Duty. Xiaomi also chucks in a decent set of tools for blocking notifications, recording your bad skills, or in my case, an endless stream of death and failure. So media fans and gamers should adore the ruddy heck out of the Redmi Note 11 Pro, especially as the battery life is so good that you can basically stream YouTube or get your game on for hours at a time before that battery finally runs dry. Xiaomi's blows come pack in the MIUI launcher, which resembles stock Android in many ways here in version 13, but with a lot of bonus extras tossed in, including that gaming mode that I was just banging on about a few seconds ago. However, the Redmi Note 11 Pro is still lingering on Android 11, unfortunately no sign of the latest freshest Android 12 just yet, although the global rollout is apparently in action. And this is the bad thing about Xiaomi Blows is that you don't tend to get the security updates and the OS updates as reliably and as frequently as you do with rivals such as Samsung and OnePlus. But if you can live with that then there is a lot to love here including a headphone jack, hooray, and expandable storage. Now one alternative option which generally costs a little bit more cash but is definitely well worth a look is Xiaomi's 11 Lite 5G NE. This is a little dinkier at 6.55 inches, but it boasts a more premium Gorilla Glass design. You've got Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus support on that premium style AMOLED panel, while the 64 megapixel primary camera sensor offers similar results to the 108 meg shooter on that Redmi Note 11 Pro. And if you want to know more, I've done full reviews of both of these smartphones right here on Techspert. Now another brand well worth checking out if it's solid value for money that you want is Poco, who actually used to be part of the Xiaomi fold until very recently, and one of their best from last year was the Poco F3. This budget 5G handset is fully clad in Gorilla Glass 5, unlike the many placky blowers in this roundup, with a mighty AMOLED screen that is both bright and bold. It's a great way to take in a depraved anime or whatever other entertainment you happen to be into. You've got a powerful, if slightly uneven, stereo speaker setup too, with Dolby Atmos tuning, 
but no headphone jack, which is a bit of an arse. As for the software, well, it's a slightly rebranded, slightly pockified version of Xiaomi's MIUI launcher because it used to be part of the Xiaomi fam. And this once again comes with basically the same pros and cons as MIUI, one of the major pros being the excellent bonus bits chucked on, like the fantastic gaming mode. And if you are a gamer, you'll definitely want to get this smartphone over most rivals in this roundup, as the Snapdragon 870 chipset means the Poco F3 can kick the arse of any game out there, even the memory scoff and Genshin Impact. And no complaints on the 48 megapixel primary camera, which can capture decent looking pics and home movies with very little fuss. My only real complaint, besides the lack of a headphone jack, is the fact that the Poco F3 doesn't tend to last a full day if you are on it constantly, so if longevity is a priority for you as well, then definitely you might want to look elsewhere in this roundup. But if you've got the money for it, the Poco F3 is definitely one of the best affordable 5G phones out there. And definitely do not sleep on the excellent Poco X3 GT either. This bad boy boasts a shatter-resistant Gorilla Glass Victus display and the same feature-packed MIUI experience. Although once again there's no headphone jack and also unfortunately Poco has done away with the micro SD memory card expandability so you can't boost the 128 or 256 gigs of speedy UFS 3.1 storage. On the plus side, that near 6.7 inch IPS screen is nearly identical to the X3 Pros with 120Hz refresh and HDR support, plus a stereo speaker arrangement and flawless Bluetooth 5.2 streaming. The Dimensity 1100 chipset plus the dedicated liquid cool tech means you can piss away hours on end with, again, memory gobbling games like Genshin Impact. You've got 5G support across two SIMs, you've got Wi-Fi 6 support as well, and the mighty 5000 mAh battery kept me going all day long no matter what I was up to, and even when it is stone dead, you can charge it up at a jiffy with the 67 watt fast charging support. And that 64 meg camera can cope with all manner of tricky shots, including hyperactive kids off their tits on sherbet, while your 4K home movies will be absolutely stuffed with fine detail. And if all of these phones so far have just been a little bit out of your budget, well, no worries. Another impressive 5G ready smartphone that packs the kind of price that will have your trousers blown off in merriment is the Poco M4 Pro 5G. We're talking well under 200 quid at the time that I shot this video. This 5G ready blower sports a 6.6 inch Full HD display. You've got a stereo speaker setup of sorts, smooth everyday performance driven by a Dimensity 810 chipset, and a 5000 mAh battery that will keep you going until you're all tucked up with Teddy. The best part of the Poco M4 Pro 5G is possibly the way it doesn't actually have a macro lens or any other pointless optical wankery thrust onto that deceptively large camera chassis. Now you've got your primary 50 megapixel shooter and an ultra wide angle alternative and that's your lot, absolute bliss, although admittedly the camera tech is typically budget. So yeah, the photo quality is slightly dubious at times, but that's no different to most other cheapy handsets around the Poco M4 Pro 5G's price point. Now, if you reckon you'd probably prefer a more pure Android experience to what we've seen so far, well, definitely check out Motorola's smartphones. And one of the better ones that they've released recently is the Moto G200 5G. This has a Snapdragon 888 Plus chipset packed inside, so it's the best performer of all of these phones here for a 400 quid price tag. That epic sized 6.8 inch screen may be IPS tech, but it is still great for watching movies or gaming. And the battery life is solid, and the 108 megapixel camera slapped on the rear pumps out good looking pics in pretty much any conditions. Unfortunately though, while you do get this lovely unbuggered about with Android experience, Motorola isn't the fastest when it comes to OS and security updates. So like the Redmi Note 11 Pro, unfortunately that Moto G200 is still languishing on Android 11 and not sure exactly when it's going to get that update to Android 12, while the security updates are a couple of months behind. And if 400 quid is just too much scratch, well, no worries at all. Motorola also serves up the very affordable Moto G50, which serves up 5G smarts for under 200 quid. This plastic slab boasts water repellent design so it can get splashed a bit without exploding. And you've got all the usual features, including NFC, a headphone jack, and micro SD support. And like the G200, Motorola has chucked in a few bonus bits, like a double chop torch action and dedicated gaming mode. You've even got a rear-mounted fingerprint sensor here, a bit of a blast from the past. The 6.5 inch IPS screen is nothing special, but it does support 90 hz refresh and the Snapdragon 480 chipset is good enough for your everyday shenanigans and some light gaming, while also offering 5G support, Natch. The 5000 mAh battery keeps you going all day too, no matter what you're up to. 
Now another manufacturer who offers great value smartphones is Realme and the latest one is the Realme 9 Pro Plus. The shtick with this is flagship camera mid-range price and that main 50 megapixel Sony IMX 766 sensor with OIS built in certainly does seem impressive for the price. But this phone is much more than just a big dick waving bag of optics. You've also got a Super AMOLED screen, some Dimensity 920 smarts, 60 watt fast charging for the mighty battery. And I'm actually reviewing this smartphone at the time I'm shooting this video. So by the time this video actually goes live, that should hopefully be live as well. And it's so good, even my cat loves it apparently. One older and more affordable alternative is the Realme 8 5G, this time powered by the MediaTek Dimensity 700. And this keeps everything pretty smooth and can handle some light gaming on the go similar to the Moto G50. The 6.5 inch IPS panel boasts 90 hertz refresh and the battery life is solid, while essentials such as expandable storage and a headphone jack are once again present and correct. However, the camera tech, a pretty basic 48 megapixel shooter with your bog standard macro and depth sensors slapped alongside, is not particularly great. I definitely got better results from other smartphones in this roundup. And also, unlike Motorola, Realme smartphones use a launcher which is very imaginatively titled the Realme UI Launcher. And this, similar to MIUI and the Poco Launcher, offers a butt ton of bonus features slapped on top of Android. You've got greater customization than what you get with stock Android. You've got another great gaming mode all that good stuff and overall it's perfectly likable although it can be a bit full-on if you're not used to it that settings menu is just an absolute nightmare to navigate for instance but anyway if you're not too bothered about a stock android vibe then definitely check out those realme blowers moving on realme's sibling company oppo offers up the rather lovely a54 5g and the a74 5g for a budget price and these both deliver a very similar color os style experience to those realme phones this time you've got a 6.5 inch LTPS screen with 90 hertz refresh. It's not quite as good as OLED, but it still spits out some pretty good looking visuals for this sort of price point. Both of these Oppo phones are powered by the Snapdragon 480 platform with four gigs of RAM for the A54 and six for the A74. Either way, you've got enough grunt for gaming on fair like PUBG and Call of Duty. And micro SD, NFC, headphone jack, all of that shiz is present and correct. Battery life is ruddy brilliant with faster charging for the A74 handset and the camera tech will see you through as long as lighting conditions are fine. Although low light and indoor shots can look grainy or just generally a bit poo. Another manufacturer who has fully embraced 5G on the cheap is OnePlus, already spaffing out a couple of decent handsets at a budget price. First up is the OnePlus Nord 2, billed as a flagship killer, which is powered by the beefy Dimensity 1200 AI chipset. No surprise, therefore, that online ultraviolence is a thing of glory and wonder, playing with a perfect frame rate throughout. Sadly, that battery life isn't quite as strong as some of the alternative options I've already covered in this roundup, but at least when the OnePlus Nord 2 is drained, you've got 65 watt fast charge support to get you powered back up in a jiffy. I love that refreshingly compactish design, while that 6.43 inch OLED screen is a stunner, boasting gorgeous contrast and punchy colors, plus a smooth 90 hertz finish. And the OnePlus Nord's quad camera setup uses a 50 megapixel primary lens with Sony's IMX766 sensor. And while it's not infallible, this does a decent job with photo quality in pretty good conditions. And on top of that, you've got that lovable Oxygen OS experience with the reassurance of a guaranteed couple of years of OS and security updates. And if you're a bit too skint for that, well, OnePlus has just launched the fresh new Core Edition model of the Nord right here in Blighty as well. Bit less cash, slightly less sexy specs, but I should have you a full unboxing of that live right now and hopefully a full review coming soon. And last up, a quick shout out for the Infinix Zero 5G, which I've unboxed here on TechSpert. It may be a bit trickier to find than some of the other handsets in this roundup, but once again offers solid value for money. Gamers can blaze through the latest Android titles with a smooth frame rate, even demanding apps once again like Genshin Impact run remarkably well. PUBG, Call of Duty Mobile and other online games also perform perfectly. You got that Sub-6 5G and also Wi-Fi 6 support for getting online, plus a mighty 5000 milliamp battery so you won't run dry when you least expect. The Infinix Zero 5G sadly ain't quite as impressive when it comes to the camera tech though that 48 meg shooter is basic at best and that 13 meg selfie lens is also limited. And while the 6.8 inch IPS screen is absolutely fine for watching movies and playing games, you will find better displays at this sort of budget price. So anyway, there she blows, that's my roundup of the very best budget friendly 5G ready smartphones that you can bag yourself right now in early 2022 that I've personally tested and reviewed. If I've missed out your own personal favorites, then I can only apologize. 
clearly haven't managed to get around to that. But if I haven't missed off your interference, definitely clue me in in the comments below. Try to use as little abusive language as possible. If any of them have intrigued, definitely check out my full reviews. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do put subscribe, ding that notifications bell, and have yourselves a bloody lovely rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.